Chapter 3, Jean-Luc's new job. Ever since his Sunday school teacher had talked from Psalm 37, 4, Jean-Luc had been thinking. Have you ever just thought about something? You kind of scratch your head. Try it with me, would you? Scratch your head and you're just thinking, hmm, I wonder, hmm, wow, that really makes sense. Maybe you're sitting in class and your teacher said something and you said, wow, that's amazing. And your teacher said, shh, be qu- oh, thank you. Well, Jean-Luc didn't say anything, but after class, after he had heard his teacher say the verse, delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Jean-Luc had been thinking about that. For the longest time, he had really wanted to be a sailor on a ship, but as he thought about that verse, he thought, you know, I need to delight myself in the Lord. And from that day on, he was a different person. Why, instead of thinking all about himself, he started thinking about other people. He decided, I will concentrate on loving the Lord and just see what God will do. What would God do? Jean-Luc didn't have a job. He wasn't sailing on the voyage of the fat belly. And there he was wondering, what will happen? Hmm. I can't go with the chimney sweep. <gasps> and I, there's so many other people who just don't need me to work for them. I guess I'll just, I'll just thank God that he loves me and I'll wait for him. One morning while Jean-Luc was reading his Bible and praying, He heard a knock on the front door. It was a loud knock, and he wondered, well, who could be there this early in the morning? Why, it was 7 o'clock. He heard his father open the door in the living room, and someone came inside, and he could hear them talking quite excitedly, and he thought, well, I wonder who that is. Wait a minute. I think it sounds sounds like someone from church. I think I've heard that voice before. Yeah, that's who it is. And a big smile crept across his face because he knew it was Pierre. Can you say Pierre? Pierre Pierre was the big, fat, jolly man in the church who was the chef at a restaurant in town. He was such a funny man. Every time Jean-Luc would be by Pierre, Pierre would say something funny, and Jean-Luc would just laugh and laugh and laugh. You know someone like that, don't you? It just makes you laugh to be around the person. They just look at you the right way. And you start laughing. Well, what was Pierre doing at 7 o'clock at their house? Jean-Luc, please come to the living room. Jean-Luc closed his Bible and walked out to the front room, and there was Pierre. Pierre said, Jean-Luc, I have something to tell you. (laughs) What is that, Pierre? You're always so funny. You make me laugh all the time. Well, This is not something to laugh at. This is something to smile about and be very, very happy. Oh, well, well, what is it? I don't know what it could be. Jean-Luc, I need an assistant in the kitchen to be my helper. And you are just the boy for the job. uh, Me? Well, I don't know how to cook. I can hardly peel the... I can't do anything. Why... I will teach you everything you need to know. Come with me. Jean-Luc's father went and winked at him. That meant you can do it. So Jean-Luc put on his coat and walked with Pierre, and suddenly he had a job. He would be the assistant for Pierre as the chef of the restaurant. Wow, what an exciting job. Pierre taught him everything that he needed to do. He taught him how to make hot dogs. Mmm. And just the right amount of ketchup and mustard and relish to put on them. And he also showed him how to make pies, mmm, apple pies and cherry pies and pecan pies, mmm, mmm. Oh, well, I like pecan pie and all of the wonderful things that he could eat. He made venison and he made steaks and he made chicken fajitas and he made everything. Well, it was so good and he learned how to do everything. He was just so excited. But you know, that wasn't the only thing that Jean-Luc was doing. You see, Jean-Luc still remembered the verse he had learned from his Sunday school teacher. Delight thyself also in the Lord. And so, even while he was working, sometimes he would go up to the people, the servants that were there, and he would sit down and he'd say, you know what? Jesus loves us very much. Did you know that? And the servant might say, no, tell me about that. I didn't know that. 
and he would have an opportunity to tell while he was working, while he was cutting up carrots. He would tell people about Jesus, and he would tell them all about the things he had been reading in the Bible, and he was so excited. you know why, boys and girls? Because he loved God, and he wanted everybody to know about him. Sometimes Jean Luc would walk after work, go down the street, and he'd have some of the leftovers he was going to take to his family. He'd be walking down the street, and there he would see some of the street children who didn't have a place to live, and he'd say, yeah, I... I think I better give them to them. And he would give them to them or some poor family, but he didn't just stop there. He would say, you know why I'm giving this to you? Because God loves you. And he would tell them about Jesus. Don't you think that's a good thing to do? Oh, he was such a good boy. He was a good worker. And he was a good witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Pretty soon, Jean-Luc was known as the little preacher. Well, one day... After working for Pierre for about a year, Pierre came to Jean-Luc and said, Jean-Luc, I want you to sit down. Jean-Luc sat down in a chair, and he waited for what Pierre was going to say. Pierre said, I have something that is very exciting. And his fingers just wiggled because he was just so excited. And he said, Jean-Luc, I have never been so excited in all of my life. <laughs> I, Pierre, have been asked by the king. The king has asked me to have a feast at the palace. Wow! And you are going to go with me. Well, what were they going to do? They hurriedly got things ready. They got all the meat cut up and cooked, and they got the carrots and potatoes and all the little things that had to be made and the pies and the, oh, all the nice things you make for a big feast, all the favorite things you could think of, and they made them and got them all ready, and they took them over to the palace. What would it be like? Well, Jean-Luc really didn't have a whole lot of time to do anything else but work. He was chopping and making and putting things in the oven, and finally everything was done, and he thought, I wonder what it's like to eat with a king. And so Jean-Luc walked over to the kitchen door, ever so slowly, and opened the door just about that much. And he looked out, and he almost fell over. He couldn't believe it. Standing before the king was Captain Kergula of the Fat Belly. He couldn't believe it. He looked back at Pierre and then looked back through the crack and he looked and there was Captain Kergula standing before the king. And he said, O king, greatest king in all of the world and ruler of France, I have something wonderful to tell you today. I have discovered a new land, one that is full of wonderful things, tall trees, wonderful fish in the water, animals that are strong. There is much space for us to build, wonderful palaces. People can move there, and suddenly this will be the new France, and everything will be wonderful when we have farms, and houses, and streets, and wonderful things all over this new country I have found so far away. And the king enjoyed hearing everything that Captain Kergula had said. And pretty soon, Jean-Luc noticed that the king said, Kneel before me, Captain Kergula. And he took out his sword and laid it on his shoulder and made him the duke of the kingdom. Wow. Jean-Luc could hardly believe it. He closed the door and ran back to Pierre and said, Can you believe? That's Captain Kergula in there. I can't believe it. They have just made him a duke, and he has discovered a new land. And he was so excited that he ran all the way home to his house and forgot to clean the dishes. And he went home and he told all the wonderful stories of all that he had heard about the king and Captain Kergula. And that was such an exciting story. His parents were listening, but something even more exciting was going to happen the very next day. 
The next morning, Jean-Luc woke early, and he got ready. He had read his Bible and prayed, and he began walking down the street. And as he arrived at the restaurant where he worked, he noticed something was wrong. There across the doorway was a big sign hanging by a rope that said, Restaurant is closed. The, rest, the restaurant is closed? I don't understand. Why? Hmm. There must be some mistake. Jean-Luc walked into the kitchen and noticed that there was no one else in there except Pierre was sitting on a chair and working at a desk and writing on some papers. And he, he said, uh, Pierre, I, I noticed there was a sign on the door of the restaurant that said the restaurant is closed. But there must be some mistake. Oh, no, 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 no. You misunderstand me. I have something, something to tell you. I have bad news. And I have good news. Which would you like to hear first? Jean-Luc said, you better tell me the bad news first. All right, sit down, sit down, Jean-Luc. I have something to tell you. I have something to tell you. The bad news is, I will no longer be the chef of this restaurant. We are going to be closing this, this restaurant. No longer will we work here. I will not need you as an assistant because we are closing the restaurant. I have been called by the king to be a chef on one of his ships. Oh, well, uh, um, well that, that I'm very happy for you. I'm very happy for you. Uh, I, I, guess, uh, I guess that means you won't be needing me. And I, I'll, just, I'll just clean the dishes, and, and then I'll go home. I'll take all my stuff, and I'll see you later. No, 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 no. You misunderstand me. You misunderstand me. I have good news, too. I have been called to go on the ship where Captain Kergala is the captain, and you are going with me. <gasps> Jean-Luc was so happy. Oh, you mean I get to go on the ship with you? You mean I don't have to get a new job? I get to go with you? Oh, oh, I'm going to go ask my parents and see if it's okay. I, wait, Pierre, Pierre stopped him. He said, no, you misunderstand me again. I have already asked your parents. You are allowed to go. Go pack your bags. We will leave in three days. <gasps> Jean-Luc was so happy. For the longest time, he had wanted to go on the voyage with the fat belly. And it was time he was finally going to get to go. Wow. And suddenly a verse came to his mind. The verse that his Sunday school teacher had taught him. Psalm 37.4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart.